Welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have a great show for you today. First topic we'll be going over is the American League games in action from yesterday. After that, we'll be moving into the Oakland A's and their recent winning streak. Then we'll be going over the National League and moving into Shota Imanaga and his recent tear that he has been on with the Chicago Cubs and the great start he has had to his MLB career. Now, before we do all that, I would like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read in the air, please use the link at gsmcpodcast.net. Really, that has helped the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show today. All right, so as I said, we are going to be starting off with the American League games of yesterday and just all the action that came with it. So, yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. So... The first game we have on the agenda is going to be Guardians and Astros again. A really exciting series so far. Estevan Florial and the Guardians offense was great yesterday, but they were no match for the Astros as they hit a walk-off. But Guardians looking to get some revenge here. Top of the fifth, Will Brennan would open up the scoring in the game with a solo shot, his his fourth of the year to make a 1-0 Cleveland. And Stephen Kwan with an RBI triple to score Brian Rokikio to make it 2-0 Cleveland. Bottom of the sixth, Jose Altuve would get a run on the board for Houston, making a 2-1 with an RBI single. And in the bottom of the tenth, Kyle Tucker would hit a solo home run to make it 2-2. Now, scoring would not happen until extra innings now, so two back-to-back games of extra innings for this very exciting series, as the Guardians would end up winning the, uh, end up winning the game with an RBI double by Stephen Kwan to make a 3-2 in the top of the tenth. And the Astros, of course, would not score after that, and they would end up losing this game to Cleveland 3-2. Now, great job by Cleveland. Um, had a tough had a tough loss the last game, so nice job for them to rebound and continue their winning ways of the season. For the Guardians, they did have on the mound Tristan McKenzie, who was phenomenal. Seven innings pitched, five hits, two run runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. Now McKenzie has been up and down so far. He was a really great pitcher a few years ago, but had some injuries this year and last year, and has not been as good. But starts like that remind you of who he could be and just his overall potential. The Astros had on the mound Justin Verlander, who went seven innings pitch, giving up six hits, two run runs, three walks, two strikeouts. Now pitching in three games since his injury, has a 2.08 ERA, and it's just going back to Justin Verlander. I mean, of course, we've we've known about his injuries and all that, but he still is Justin Verlander, and he's been having great starts, and he's, he's been doing a great job, and he's been helping the Astros rotation a lot, which has dealt with a lot of injuries, so good for him. Next game we have is going to be Tigers and Cardinals. Scoring would open up for this game in the bottom of the second with a Colt Keith RBI double to make a 1-0 Detroit, scoring Matt Veerling. Going to the bottom of the third now, Matt Veerling would hit a two-run home run to make a 3-0 Detroit and get them up early, but Wilson Contreras would get a run back for St. Louis as he would make a 3-1 with a solo home run. Bottom of the eighth, Matt Veerling again would come in clutch with a sacrifice fly to make it 4-1 Detroit, and that is how they would end up winning this game. So really strong ground by Veerling there. It's just a really quality bat and had a good game there for Detroit. Detroit had on the mound Kenta Maeda, who went six innings pitched, four hits, and earned run, no walks, and five strikeouts. Has been up and down since signing with Detroit, but that was a really quality start there. He gets a really quality offense, so good, good for him, and hopefully Tigers fans will see more of that in the future. For the Cardinals, they have on the mound Miles Michaelis, who went six innings pitched, six hits, three earned runs, no walks, four strikeouts, a 5 6 8 ERA on the season. Now, not a great start there by Michaelis. Um, you know, it wasn't horrible, six, six innings pitched, three earned runs, but still a 5.68 ERA in the season. Not really what you want. Not exactly what you want to see for a guy like Michaelis for the Cardinals, who rely on their starting pitching so much now. So, yeah, def- definitely like to see more for that. Next game we have is going to be Twins and White Sox, a continuation of this AL Central series. Scoring would open up in the bottom of the first with a Tommy Pham RBI double to make 1-0 Chicago. I mean, Tommy Pham has just been incredible since coming there. I don't know why he wasn't signed during the offseason, and I think teams are learning to regret that decision now. I think he's a really quality bat, and I, again, just don't know why he was out there for so long. Andrew Vaughn had an RBI single in the same inning to make a 2-0. So, really nice job by Chicago to get up front early. Top of the third, Christian Vasquez would hit an RBI ground out to make it 2-1. And in the bottom of the third, Tommy Pham would hit his first home run as the Chicago White Sox to make it 3-1, getting the runs right back. So, Pham has just been a spark plug for this Chicago team in offense and just doing a great job. Top five, Alex Kirloff would hit a solo home run to make it 3-2, his second of the year to get the Twins within run. 
But Robbie Grossman in the bottom of the fifth would get the run right back for Chicago, hitting an RBI double to make it 4-2. to two. Top of the sixth, Willie Castro would reach on a fielding error by Paul DeYoung, which would score Max Kepler and Trevor Larnick to make it 4-4, four to four, a critical error by Paul DeYoung there in the White Sox to get the to get Minnesota back to tying up the game 4-4. Four to four. Top of the seventh, Max Kepler would hit an RBI single to get take the lead from Minnesota, making it 5-4. to four. A Jose Miranda two-RBI single would make it 6-4. to four. Corey Lee would hit a solo shot to make it 6-5 to five to get the White Sox within a run, but the, the Twins would run away with it after that with a Jose Miranda RBI double to make it 7-5, to five, a Ryan Jeffers RBI double to make it 9-5, to five, and a Willie Castro RBI single to make it 10-5 to five, Minnesota as they would end up winning this game at that score. So really solid job there. A uh, really nice win for the Twins to be able to come back and win this game. White Sox had on the mound Chris Flexen, who went five innings pitched, four hits, two run runs, two walks, four strikeouts. Not the best start, not exactly what you want to see. The Twins had on the mound Bailey Ober, who also just was okay. Six innings pitched, four run runs, no walks, three strikeouts. Again, nice job going for six innings, but not really the earned run amount you want to see. Definitely not great. So the next game we have here is going to be about the Royals and the Blue Jays. So for, for this, scoring would open up in the top of the sixth with a Bobby Wood Jr. RBI single to make it 1-0 Kansas City. Salvador Perez would an RBI single as well to make it 2-0. And a Michael Massey ground out would make it 3-0. Kansas City all in the top of the sixth. Toronto would get a run back with a Danny Jansen solo home run, his third of the year. But Kansas City would run away with it after that with a Michael Massey three-run home run, his second of the year, to make it 6-1 to one Kansas City and end up winning this game for them. So the Royals had on the mound Seth Lugo, who was, again, phenomenal. Honestly, might be an early Cy Young candidate. Seven innings pitch, two hits, an earned run, two walks, eight strikeouts. Just other than that solo home run to Danny Jansen was absolutely phenomenal in lockdown. Blue Jays. They have on the mound Chris Bassett, who went six innings pitched, four hits, three earned runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Hasn't had the best season so far, but a start, a start like that is just okay and not too horrible. But Kansas City, man, I mean, their rotation is really, really carrying them. They're a good team, but their rotation is absolutely phenomenal, and I don't think they'll be stopping anytime soon. So definitely watching them. Next game we have is going to be uh, Yankees and Orioles. So for this game, the scoring would open up in the top of the fifth with a Oswaldo Cabrera two-run home run to make it 2-0 New York. And guess what? That will be the entire scoring of the game, 2-0 New York. So, yeah, a pretty unexciting game, but nice win by New York to uh, defeat their division rival Orioles, who, as we've said multiple times now, are kind of on the same level as them. I mean, 20-12 and for the Yankees and 19-11 and for Baltimore, just a one-game difference. They're as even as it can get, so... You know, both teams are getting reinforcements. Yankees are getting Cole back in a few months, most likely. Orioles are getting Kyle Bradish back soon. So that should be good for both teams, and we'll just see this rivalry grow even more. The Orioles did have on the mound Corbin Burns, who went six innings pitched, four hits, two run runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. Really, really strong start there. Again, has just been such a great ace. And we talked about Seth Lugo before as a Cy Young candidate. I think Corbin Burns in that conversation as well has been a great trade for Baltimore, and it's really solidified that rotation. For the Yankees, they had on the mound Luis Heal, who went six and a third innings pitch, giving up two hits, no run runs, a walk, and five strikeouts, 319 ERA on the season. He's had He has such great stuff over his career, and when he learns to control his walks like he did in this game, he's going to be a deadly starting pitcher, a guy who's really going to make noise in this league. And, yeah, he's been, he, was, he has been really great for the Yankees so far, a really quality arm, and good job for him. I mean, just... Uh, was kind of in flux with his career, but figured out uh, what to do to get himself back in there, get himself a real, make himself a real arm in that rotation for the Yankees, and has done just that and has been really, really solid. So, props to him. Next team we have is going to be um, Red Sox and Giants. Scoring for this game would open up in the top of the third with a Tom Murphy solo home run to make it one nothing San Francisco. Bottom of the third, Rafi Devers would tie it up for Boston, making it 1 to 1 with an RBI double. And Rob Refschnarder RBI ground out would make it 2 to 1 Boston. A Mike Jaskremski RBI single would make it 2 to 2 San Francisco, uh, hitting that RBI against his grandfather's former team. Of course, Carl, one of the greatest players of all time. Bottom of the fourth, Emmanuel Valdez would hit an RBI double to make it 3 to 2 Boston. And a Jaron Duran RBI triple would make it 4 to 2. 
a Dom Smith RBI single in his first game as a Red Sox would make it five to two. He did get traded there to uh, to Boston. I think it was a nice fill in for uh, the first base position right now. You know they haven't had the best production there after Justin Casas got hurt. So I really like this move. I didn't get a chance to talk about it, but I did enjoy the move and good job there by getting an RBI in his first game. Bottom of the seventh, Connor Wong would just add on for the Red Sox in their lead, hitting an RBI double to score Will Urabreu to make it 6-2 to two Boston, and they would end up winning the game there. So a quality win by the Red Sox. They had on the mound Cutter Crawford, who was phenomenal. Seven innings pitched, four hits, two run runs, two walks, six strikeouts, one five nine here right in the season. Really, really great start. Really good job. The Giants had on the mound a opener. The opener was Eric Miller, one of their relievers. He went one inning pitch, no one runs. Uh, mainly really no bulk guys, but the guy who really blew the lead was Dalton Jeffries, who now has a 17-36 ERA in four and two-thirds innings pitched. Not exactly what you're looking for. Mitch White was also more of a bulk guy in this game, going two innings, recently acquired by the Giants. So only at one run, it's a solid job there, but, you know, an opener for the Giants. So not much to talk about for the starting pitching. The last game we are going to be talking about is going to be A's and Pirates. So scoring would open up for this game in the bottom of the second with a Abraham Toro solo home run to make a one nothing Oakland. Then in the bottom of the third, Tyler Nevin would hit a solo shot himself to make it two nothing. Bottom of the fifth, Abraham Toro would again reach this time on a fielding error by O'Neill Cruz to make a three nothing, scoring Tyler Nevin. And Je- Kyle McCann would hit an RBI single to score Esther Ruiz to make it four nothing Oakland. McCann has been off to a really hot start with the A since being called up. Pirates had on the mound Quinn Priester, who went six innings pitched, giving up five hits, three runs, two earned, four walks, three strikeouts, 3-3-1 three, three, ERA in the season. The A's had on the mound Ross Stripling, who went six innings pitched, three hits, no one runs, no walks, two strikeouts, 4-2-4 four, four ERA on the season. Now, the A's have been doing really well so far. I mean, they've, they're have 6-1 in their last seven. They've got a lot going for them right now. A lot of their players are performing expectations, doing really well. And it's a good way to go into my next segment, which is about the A's and their surprising season. I mean, as I've said, you know, they've won six of their last seven. And, yeah, I just thought it was really interesting, and it was something I wanted to talk about. So, yeah, we're going into talking about the A's surprising season next, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please slow 